try to uh, lose weight, except perhaps uh, people like Dr. Sanjubhai, but uh, otherwise everybody would like to lose weight. But uh, my point is, the weight loss is sudden, or the weight loss occurs to some disease, nobody would like to lose weight. So, this is a patient who might see. Chronic diarrhea, dementia, depression, 
eating disorders, um, titrating insufficiency, AIDS, hypothyroidism, infection, malnutrition, chemotherapy, Parkinson's disease, smoking or tobacco. These are the things which occur to our mind when you face a patient who has lost considerable weight. Diabetes itself, we all know, can make a patient lose weight. I mean, we are aware of that because, uh, because the sugar is not being able to be utilized by the body in the absence of insulin. They develop a loss of weight because of uh, their body fats and other their proteins get eaten up. That's the reason many a diabetic person has a weight loss body. But in this case, he's a no diabetic 10 years, fairly adequate control. And uh, the test, uh, whatever I could do at the time, except um, I found hyponatremia. Really, I couldn't uh, find what exactly was the reason maybe he we could lay our hands because physical examination had drawn a blank, so also the test. So I corrected the hyponatremia. Patient remained weak, but somehow he said because I've been lying in the bed, he had said some body pain, some low back pain, and so on. I would have normally ignored this thing. Seventy-year-old man lying in bed, leg pains, body and pain. So I thought um, it's the usual pain. Many of the patients at this age develop back pain, so how much importance we can give to that? We took an x ray just to be sure, and we showed a reduction in the height of the D9 vertebra. It was generalized osteopenia, and the transverse parts do not show any abnormality, and the positive finds were a reduction in the height of the D9 vertebra with a soft tissue component uh, D8 and D10 in level. That is where we thought I, mean, we should, I should have ignored this back pain wound because he had just come with back pain when only on the second, third time when he was talking, he complained some back pain. And that is what made me look into the spine to find out if the spine X-ray was this. Then we did the MRI of the spine. As you can see, this short features of port spine are D10, D11, with uh, this guy and the anterior abscess as this guy there. And there were these bulges, changes of my myomalacia, and uh, this bulge L4. These are common things which we see in practice. This bulge uh, L4, 5, this is common at this age. But the crucial thing was the problem at the uh, uh, D10, D11 with the uh, axis at that area. So having made a diagnosis, and I mean nowadays we deal with all super educated patients, so we have to be sure what we are doing. I said that uh, at least we have a diagnosis, uh, looks like a hypocrosis of the spine and so on. And can we start the treatment? But whatever the test we did earlier, in terms of as a diabetes and tuberculosis go, and in, and in many cases, we see many diabetics have tuberculosis problem. But um, I did anticipate that tuberculosis will be spiked at this level. That's what, because the patient's complaints were totally um, a sort of, I would say this guy, he told his complaint, whatever he had, his Pepsi had also made, that was his complaint. But, um, and only on the third sitting or fourth sitting, he came up, maybe back pain I have. Because I remember probing only the history enabled me to take an X-ray of the spine. And uh, the absence in the spinal parasitic area was aspirated, it was negative for AFD. Again, Mantu was negative, gene expert was negative. But luckily to my luck, that at least we have approved the Mycobacterium tuberculosis culture was positive. So anti tuberculosis treatment was started in the four drugs. And he appeared to make a little, appeared to be better. At least from my point of view, he, uh, I mean, we seem to have hit the diagnosis and started on the treatment. And uh, we continued the treatment. At the end of four weeks, we continued, we took a further MRI. It shows still extensive multifocal osteomyelitis in uh, abscess in pre and paraventral region, extensive involvement of the pelvic bones, sacral and the joint, 
associated reacts the section into nitrate region and uh, compared to the previous MRI, the vertical osmolality is at D10 or more or less unchanged. The multifocal involvement as in the present scale we have also seen previously. And the pelvic walls and right shaker joint and right of abscess were of course were not included in the previous scan with But after four weeks of treatment, patients um, I mean I think I have reached diagnosis given the antitubercular treatment. The fact that the abscess has tracked down, maybe because the abscess has to track down whatever, uh, literally we can we took off the abscess earlier, showed the diagnosis. But we couldn't, um, I mean, we couldn't uh, put out all of the abscess. And presently, the patient is doing satisfactory. That's what I would say. Uh, I did ask for, uh, I mean, orthopedic opinion to see whether he would do anything further. He said uh, for the present living alone, because uh, it will take time for the particular uh, tuberculosis of the spine to resolve. That's where we are. Thank you. I'm sure um, I mean, this is only, I mean, in this um, IMA audience, we usually see a uh, lot of uh, um, I mean, interesting things in terms of whether it's a cardiac or a neuro. We learn a lot of things. But I thought this simple case also is a learning point. That's the reason I presented this. Thank you, Dr. Sharma.